Welcome to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers Extra Point. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome inside our KDK slash CW studios. This is the Extra Point. Bob Pompiani and Chris Hoke with you following a Steelers road win. So they like domed stadiums. Why not? Uh, they beat the Colts. They beat the Falcons, although both games very similar in nature, Chris. As you yep. see that final score, a lot of field goals in this game, 19-16. But last week in Indianapolis, the Steelers started quick and then saw the Colts come on in the second half. Same thing held true today where the Falcons were really mauling the Steelers on the line of scrimmage, running the ball. You thought they may start the game like that. That is their bread and butter. They started passing the ball. Marcus Mariota was sailing it pretty much all day down the field, and the Steelers uh, did a good job at the end to kill the clock, essentially. And then a nice punt by it, Georgia Tech. Tell it to the half, right? Yeah, the way the, the Steelers dominated that first half by running the football and controlling the line of scrimmage. And you saw there in the second half, the Atlanta Falcons turned the tide there, and they started to do what they've been doing all season. You know, top five rushing attack in the NFL, and they started pounding the Steelers, and they started to wear down, and they reversed the roles and really – brought the balance into the time of possession and made this game interesting. Steelers, big interception that into the game to seal the victory. Yeah, I thought two smart plays there. Kenny Pickett slid and yep. didn't go out of bounds when he was being pursued. That set up more clock time and then a nice punt by Harvin. I mean, if Fitzpatrick did a professional thing there, he could have tried to score. He decided he to go out of bounds. Put a dagger in him. Uh, but, uh, you know, anyway, they get a win, and they needed that win. So now coming up, it's going to be a game against Baltimore. We'll talk more about that as we go ahead. Uh, the Ravens have struggled to score a lot of points here, Chris, and that should be an interesting game. It always is in the AFC North. But, you know, the run game, again, for the third straight week really came to life. And, boy, offensive line looks good when they do it. They're using, uh, you know, largely uh, Najee Harris, but also Benny Snell was in there a lot. And I thought Jalen Warren was especially good run blocking today. He was down the field doing some good things. It's been great to watch. Since the bye week, the Steelers have really committed to running the ball. In the last three weeks, they're fourth in the NFL in rushing yards with 491 yards over the last three weeks. And today, when you add the 154 yards, they've got to be I mean, even more, notching up more in the NFL over the last four weeks now. That's because they've committed to the run game, Bob. They're going out now, and instead of coming out and running these RPOs, we saw one or two or three today. They are coming out with, with one back, two backs, two tight ends, one tight end, and really running the football. And the offensive linemen are pinning their ears back, coming off the ball, and they know that the Steelers are running the football. Let's go ahead and run the football, and then they can really come off and be aggressive versus these RPOs. Yeah, one thing about the Steeler offensive line, largely they've been together all season long. You know, they haven't gotten through too many injury yeah. situations, although Chooks Okorafor got banged up a little bit there today. They did, they've done a very good job in run blocking, especially since this bye week. When we come back, Mike Tomlin addresses the media. We'll also have player interviews and later your calls, as we always do. We're just getting started. This is Steelers post game, and it is the extra point following a 1916 Steelers win to get them to five and seven on the year. Atlanta falls to five and eight, and we continue right after this. Welcome back to the neighborhood Ford store Steelers extra point. We are with you for the next couple of hours, and this is your game summary. The Steelers jumped on the Falcons early, didn't punt in the first half, and they had long drives. Unfortunately, most of them ended in field goals. The only touchdown was pick it to Connor Hayward, first NFL receiving touchdown for Connor Hayward, and they led 16-6 at halftime. Second half, Atlanta dominated the play, at least some of the long drives, but again, they couldn't punch it through except one touchdown from Mariota to Pruitt. Final 1916, the Steelers back-to-back -back win on the road, and now they'll come home to take on the Baltimore Ravens, who themselves are having a hard time scoring. We saw a lot of field goals today around the NFL, it seems like, right? We, we did, yeah, and Lamar Jackson got hurt, so that'll be yeah. interesting to see how that plays out next week when they come here to Pittsburgh, and Huntley's in there at quarterback, which would make it a little easier game for the Steelers. Still, it's the Ravens, but Lamar Jackson brings a totally different element for the Steelers to consider his running and his throwing ability. So it, it'll be an interesting week playing out as we prepare for that week, Bob but the Ravens are struggling right now. They are. And Kenny Pickett took another step today. I thought first half he delivered some nice balls. Uh, I thought it was a really good uh, route by Connor Hayward to get the touchdown. He made a double move, and the safety came up, and he hit him. He was wide open on that play. But, again, another step in the right direction. I'm seeing a lot of growth from Kenny, right? He's out there throwing some nice throws. He is still a little consistent, but now it's, le it's lesser and farther between, right? He is out there making better throws more often, and the bad throws aren't as frequent. Today he missed uh, Friermuth down the seam. If you remember that throw, he threw one down third down at Friermuth's feet. 
Um, and then you have drops still, right? You're having Deontay Johnson dropping balls. And uh, one that was overturned that could have been detrimental to the Steelers uh, game today. But Kenny Pickett, going back to him, Bob, I believe that Kenny is making a lot of progress. And everything turned for the Steelers team at the bye week. His numbers and his play have drastically improved over the last four weeks since he had an opportunity to step back, catch his breath, evaluate the film, and really just come forward. The game has really slowed down for him. He's seeing the field. He's able to roll out and throw the ball rather than running so fast. It looks like his feet are moving faster than his head. But right now, he, he, he's improving drastically each and every week. And I think it helps to have a run game that is reliable, and they have been reliable, yeah. running for over 100 yards and using different people to get there. I thought, uh, you know, one throw that uh, you mentioned, the one that he missed him in the end zone. Yeah. But there was a third and four play to Pat Fryermuth that he put it right on the money, and then Fryermuth you know, turns it into a 57 yarder with some yak yards. It took him all the way down the field. That was part of the four play 75 yard drive that led to the picket to Connor Hayward touchdown. So uh, again, the accuracy means something. We talked about this last week. When you catch the ball in stride, you can shed blo uh, potential tacklers. And that's exactly what Fryermuth did. And he turned something that should have been maybe a 10 yard play into a 57 yard reception. And Fryermuth, they gave him the ball. He had five targets in that first half. I don't think he got the ball in the second half, Bob, but three catches, like you said, um, to Today for 76 yards that was all in the first half mm -hmm. and, and really he's a guy that you've got to continue to feed the ball to he's a game changer for this team you know when Pickens doesn't get the ball for one reason or another Friar is the one that you got to punch it into he's sure-handed he's tough and he was able to convert third downs and move the chains well, you talked about that Deontay Johnson call. It was critical because Atlanta had taken control of this game, and then, then it looked like a fumble yeah. recovered by the Falcons on a pass. Now, listen, I understand the rule, and you heard Gene Steratore say you need two steps, but did you knew that was a, that was a catch. That was, that, that was a catch. In the storm of a catch, that was no a question. catch. He had both hands on it. Now, this two-step thing, do you think the competition committee needs to look at that over again? Uh, you know, they They've changed surviving the ground. It's gone remember? back and forth, right? But, but, and so. but uh, anyone who looks at that play, you can't tell me that wasn't a catch. No, everybody that watches that thought it was a catch, and the Falcons are going to point at that and say right. that was a moment. At the plus 27, they get the ball. That would have been huge for this team. Mike Tomlin is about to address the media. Let's go to ATL yeah, really right excited now. for the group in the locker room. Um, two road victories in a row, man, was much needed. Trying to find that rhythm and do what good teams do, which is stack winning performance on top of winning performance. That's the first time we've done it this year, and can't underscore that. If you're going to be somebody to be considered and taken seriously, you gotta you got to stack wins. And so hopefully it's a launching pad for us um, as we move forward. Um, not perfect today, man, but I just thought we did what was required, particularly our big boys up front and Naj. Um, I just thought they controlled the line of scrimmage, uh, minimized uh, negativity because we stayed on schedule. Um, we settled for field goals some, um, and so that's always concerning. But, you know, there's always going to be things to work on after games. Uh, I prefer to do that with a W um, as opposed to an L, and so we'll, we'll work. Um, I thought they did a good job, they meaning um, Atlanta, Man, I thought they controlled the line of scrimmage with their front in the second half and thus the time of possession, and it kind of got tight. Um, but I thought our guys collectively did not blink. They made the necessary plays uh, down the stretch to secure victory, the stops, the earn first downs, the, the late punting down inside the red zone, and then Minka closed it out. It's just good to get comp contributions from all three phases in the weighty moments to secure victory. We had to possess the ball some there. Obviously, you'd like to possess it all the way out. We didn't. We had a high-quality special teams play with that punt and then the defensive play to finish it. And so um, some good signs. Um, don't know the totality of injury, bumps and bruises associated with play. I know TJ was pretty beat up. Uh, we'll see where the Rose lead us uh, as we start to lean in on next week. Questions? Mike, the second half, was it just a question? They started controlling the line of scrimmage with the run. Is that what it was? Did they do anything differently? Right? No, they did. Kudos to them. They got a couple penalties, you know, that kind of put them behind the chains. And so I'm not going to pretend like it was something that we did. Oftentimes it's not, you know, um, same thing happened to us though on offense, to be quite honest with you. Some of those drives got stopped by a false start or something that put us behind the chains and they didn't necessarily stop us. We stopped us. Offenses do that. And so um, I thought that that was kind of reflective of what transpired. Hey, hey Mike, it's been five games in a row since you're a rookie. Quarterback is throwing interception. What does that say about his he's, game management? He's growing. He's growing, and that's a reasonable expectation. Um, he's a smart guy. He's got talent. He works at it. 
he's gaining experience with each and every play and each and every day. And so I think it's a reasonable discussion um, to acknowledge that he's going to get better at, at fundamental things, taking care of the ball, managing us, communicating, having, a, having an opinion or a suggestion. Uh, he's just growing in all areas. I know you guys ask me that every week. You want me to comb through it, how he's getting better. He's getting better in all areas. Was there a particular play, though, that really today, as the game got tighter, that impressed you in terms of how he handled the moment? Um, you know, the, 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 yeah, just, the you know, the touchdown to Connor. You know, I'll take that one. Was that a play or did he read that? And- that was a play. How about Matthew Wright since that first game hasn't missed a kick? Do you guys you know what, what has he kind of shown you? Has he shown you anything you didn't know? Coming? No, he hasn't. So what do you have Boswell able to come back? How do you progress? We'll manage that next week. I'm here to talk about what transpired in the stadium. Uh, Najee obviously uh, didn't practice two days this week and then you know, practice Friday and then he has a performance like this. What what was he able to do or the line did do to have a performance like that? Cause it seemed like that was his it, it wasn't his desire to work this week. It was more me holding him back than anything. I just knew that it was going to be this type of football game. We were going to have to ride the wave that he and the men up front provided. Um, it was no secret. We talked openly about it all week. They embraced that that challenge and they delivered. Anything else? Thanks, guys. Right. Thank you very much. All right, that's Mike Tomlin. Uh, T.J. Watt, he mentioned, you know, bumps and bruises and things. He really looked injured out there again. And I don't know, he, he was wearing some sort of rib protector in that game. Um, he went out and gutted it out, but he wasn't the same T.J. Watt. Well, think what, about what's happened since training camp, right? T.J. Watt, first of all, he got the pec. Then he had surgery on his knee. And now he's got the rib that, he's, that, that they announced in the game. That he, the second to the last game, uh, a lot, played last week against the Colts, he hurt his ribs. So he's playing with a knee, recovering knee. He's got his ribs. He's got his pec. I mean, he's beat up. He's out there giving it his all. Um, he's just not playing like T.J. Watt, like we're used to him playing. But he's making a difference. And you see, when he's on the field, Bob, the Steelers have one loss. When he's not out there, it is the completely the other way around. They have one win. So, really, you've got to have him out there on the field because what he provides for other people, he lifts other people and provides opportunities for one-on-one matchups that you wouldn't get without T.J. Watt. Yeah. The other thing the Steelers have done, they've not turned the ball over in this uh, couple of weeks, three weeks or whatever it is, and specifically Kenny Pickett, who you heard Mike Tomlin there say that he's growing. That's all part of the maturation process. He's protecting the ball without playing tentatively. That's the good thing about this and this development. He, you know, he's making plays. He's decisive. He stands in there, takes hits, he but he hasn't made mistakes in those situations. He has not made mistakes in zero interceptions the last five games and uh, two touchdowns in the bye week. And you're looking at it right now, Bob, you're going to a guy growing right in front of our eyes. And I love the way he, he's stepping into those throws and zinging the ball when the offensive line, thinking no sacks again today. When the offensive line gives him a pocket to step into, he's very accurate. The times when you find him missing throws, a lot of times the balls are sailing, um, largely is when the pocket's getting squeezed on him and he can't step into his throws. So uh, the offensive line continues to improve. Listen, we get, there's still a lot of games left here. He's going to improve because he's going to be able to step into those throws, and he's very – Bob, what I love about him, he's very decisive. Very decisive. He steps yeah. in the throws, and he makes them quick and sharp, and a lot of times they're right on the money. And he also goes through his progressions. You he were does. talking about that up there when we were watching the game. Well, a lot great. of evidence of that. Today. Yeah, it was great. He was looking to his right, and then all of a sudden he just jumped to his left and threw the ball to his left, and that's what you're not seeing before. Before, mm-hmm. earlier in the season when he was growing and developing – and he still is, but he was staring down his receivers. Now he's able to look off safeties, and that's part of his progression. We also saw, you know, penalties really hurt Atlanta. They had taken over the game in terms of running the ball consistently. Their one scoring drive was eight plays, seven rushes. They look like they had scored again when Patterson goes around the edge and scores, and that would have been a 12-play, 10-rush uh, drive, but there was a holding call on that play, and then there was a subsequent false start. Yeah. Those are killers. Mike Tomlin always talks about it, and quite frankly, they had the game right there. Yeah, uh, and, and that they happened to the play. Steelers in the first half it as did. well, right? They were they were moving the ball and doing a really good job, and they had penalties that got them behind the chains. Mm-hmm. Pe- holding penalties that are 10 yards and moving from like fir- second and two back to second and 20. Is our, our first and 20 are huge because those are those are drive killers and Steelers had some today. That's why they had to settle for field goals. And that one there in the four, in the fourth quarter when they were pounding this year, the Steelers were tired, Bob. They were gasping for air, slow to get up off the ground because they were taking a little bit of football life out of the Steelers defenders. That holding penalty and then the subsequent um, uh, false start 
really hurt the chances for the Falcons to win this game. Yeah, those are mistakes, but they also thought they got a call against them in the end zone because there was a pass in there they thought was going to be called pass interference on Arthur Mollett. If you looked at it a couple of times, you know, they could throw yeah, flags. It could have gone, gone either way. It could have gone either way on that way. one. And that would have been down. a new set of downs, and it would have given them first and goal. Yes, so. and Arthur Smith, the head coach for the Falcons, was not happy about that call because that would have put the ball at the one-yard line. Right. And uh, but they, they get the call. Sometimes you get the bear. Sometimes the bear gets you. <laughs> Let's talk about the Steeler run game as we await perhaps Kenny Pickett here at the podium. Uh, again, to me, that's that's the thing. At the bye week, we saw a shift in that they decided to go to the run. Yep. I'm always wondering why that doesn't happen earlier. I know at the beginning of the season they had Mitch Trubisky a quarterback, but I would have relied on that run as much as possible. And if it's not Najee Harris, some of these other guys have shown that they can get in there, averaging five yeah. yards a pop. They have guys in that backfield who can be good at it. Yeah. If they commit to it, you would talk about commitment. They hadn't committed, and now all of a sudden they are committed to they it. Are committed. That's, that's the beauty of the bye week, right? Because in the bye week you can go back, take a deep breath, reflect on what's going on the first half of the season, or the first up until your bye week, and then you can make some adjustments. But as you're going through the season before that bye week it's like rapid fire and all you can do is get ready for the next week you don't have time to look back and self-evaluate the bye week gave the Steelers an opportunity to do that and like I said 491 yards coming into this game fourth in the NFL in terms of rushing since their bye week and then today another 154 yards rushing uh, huge for the Steelers one of the top rushing teams now in the last four weeks and that's what they got to do about the difference is this the offensive linemen know they're running the ball. They're going to come off the ball aggressively. They're climbing up to the linebackers, which when they ran the RPOs, they weren't able to get the linebackers. Linebackers are roaming and scraping and filling free, untouched, right to the, right to the running backs. Now they're getting nailed, and they're beating up on these defenses. All right, Deontay Johnson had an interesting day today, another drop. Who would have thought that Connor Hayward would have his first touchdown receiving before Deontay Johnson? Because Johnson still has none but he made a big play at the end of the game. He had a drop, and he also had one that could have been a fumble. Uh, on that play, and I bring it up only because George Pickens was clearly agitated that he hasn't gotten a ball. I don't know what his targets were today, but not enough to suit him. And you can clearly tell he was yelling, give me the ball yeah. as he left the field. Yeah, he had two targets today, one catch, right? The one target was over. You like that from a wide oh, receiver? Well, listen, here's the, here's the reality. And I've, I've said this since day one. One of the struggles I have with the receiving core of the Steelers is the attitude, the body language after plays. If they're not getting the ball, they act like George Pickens acts today. Deontay Johnson has acted like that even last week, mm -hmm. right? The ball's over and they're showing up the quarterback. They would have never done that with Ben Roethlisberger there at quarterback, no. doing things like that. It wouldn't have, it wouldn't have flown with Ben. But that's the struggle here. They need to mature a little bit and be leaders. Deontay Johnson talked this week about being a leader on this team. And it's not all about catches and touchdowns. Being a leader is not reacting that way when you're not getting the ball. And, and I know that that's how we always say the receivers are the type of guys that throw me the ball, throw me the ball. But you can't act like that, especially when you're a young guy trying to come into your own onto a Pittsburgh Steelers team. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, Kenny Pickett will speak. T.J. Watt will have more postgame reaction from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium where the Steelers came away today with another win. Two in a row, first time this season they've done that to get that record of 5-7. and 19-16, your final. More coverage on the way from ATL. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back. Bob Pompiani, Chris Oak with you. Our number one Cochran player of the game goes to Najee Harris. 17 carries, 86 yards, along of 14. And the most impressive thing about him today, Chris, was of those 86 yards, 40 yards were after contact. Yeah, unbelievable. And he's running angry, right? And you look at this thing and you say, okay, well, he could miss some holes. He did miss some holes. So did Benny Snell. I watched some of those. But largely, he was running downhill. He was running angry. He was bullying tacklers. <laughs> and he was throwing guys down. And when you thought he was stuffed and wasn't going any further he was carrying not one not two but three guys that were hanging on him for additional yardage again like you said about 40 yards after contact that's the kind of stuff we're used to seeing from Najee Harris I thought the one play that really was uh, indicative of his day was he missed a hole then he got a defensive back and threw him down on yeah. a wicked stiff arm yeah. to the ground. No, absolutely. You know? And that pretty much summed up what he, but he does miss some holes. He does, he does so. miss some holes, but other guys do too. But I think sometimes when people see he missed a hole, he looks and there's a linebacker sitting there flying mm -hmm. up. I, I, so 
We'll, we'll give and take some of that because the way he's running now, I will take the way he's running. You know what, Bob, since the, we talk about the running game since the bye week. Since the bye week, Najee Harris has run 20 carries for 99 yards for five yards uh, average. 20 carries for 90 yards for four and a half yards average. Then 10 carries for 35 yards, 3.5 yards yep. average. He got hurt last week. That was when he was hurt. And the last one today, 17 carries for 86 yards, 5.1 average. That's what you want. That's what we're accustomed to seeing. 5.0, 4.5, and 5.1 when he gets the whole game. If we keep running like that, you're going to see the Steelers continue to win. But through the course of the season, he has been behind other guys like Jalen Warren, even Benny Snell. I know it's one game. They average five yards a carry. Yeah. So now he's making up for lost time. In the meantime, Rich Walsh and Ian uh, Smith, our chief photographer, they're in the locker room and earlier had a chance to catch up with a man who got his first NFL pass reception, Connor Hayward. Uh, had that long catch to set it up, and, uh, you know, usually that's a play call for him, but I just happened to be in, and, you know, me and Kenny connected. Everybody did their job on the play. First time you guys have won two straight games. I mean, it took a while, but you guys finally happy to get that off your back? Yeah, for sure. Uh, you know, once you start winning one and then the next one, they all start falling like Coach T says. Uh, so, you know, you know, one game at a time, we know what we have to do, you know, in order to be playing, uh, you know, after January. So, you know, we're going to do whatever it takes to win. Were you the first option on that touchdown? Uh, can you talk about the play a little bit? Uh, I, I think, you know, he's going to pick a side depending on if it's zone or man. And they had to be too high, and I, I split the safeties and it ended up working out. Uh, you know, we repped that play a lot at practice with all of us. You guys had the offense going in the first half, but in the second half it seemed like it was a similar story. Uh, what happens in the third quarter, you think, that, that allows it to slow down a little bit? Honestly, I mean, I think we ran the ball well all game, not just in the first half. Uh, but, you know, when we get down in the red zone, we just got to capitalize. Uh, you know, that's something that, uh, you know, happened last week, and we talked about that at halftime, and, you know, it ended up happening. Uh, Coach said that he wanted to walk out of here and not crawl, uh, but, you know, a win is a win. And, you know, you know we're, we're happy, and, you know, we're going to go back to work tomorrow. All right, Connor Hayward, a nice route he made. He was wide open as he got that safety out of position. A uh, little double move for him. Yeah, and, uh, beautiful. What, what about the tight ends today? You factor that in with what Firemuth did in the first half. Pretty good yeah. day for the tight ends. Pretty good day for the tight ends. And absolutely, I mean, you look at it, touchdown, 57-yard gain. That's the kinds of things you want to see. And, and then they're using the middle of the field now, Bob. Remember earlier in the year we were just complaining and, uh -huh. and, and getting upset because they weren't using the middle of the field. They're throwing the ball over the middle of the field now. And that's why you're seeing a more productive offense uh, coming coming out of this bye week. And I keep referencing the bye week because they're a totally different team since they, they've come out of that bye week, running the ball, passing the ball over the middle. Kenny Pickett's more accurate. They're using the tight ends better. Fryer Muth needs to be more involved in the game plan. In the first half, like I said, three catches, five targets. I don't think he had any in the second half. No. He needs more targets. I don't believe that the that Falcons would have gotten in back into this game if they would have given the ball to Friday. Yeah, but the one thing you say about Kenny Pickett, his stats may not be overwhelming to you, but in the last two weeks, he was better than Matt Ryan. He was better than Marcus Mariota. Uh, and so those are steps in the right direction. If your quarterback wins that battle every week, that's a pretty good sign. Minka Fitzpatrick was a guy who wrapped it all up with an interception at the end of the game after a beautiful punt by Presley Harvin. In the locker room, we go with Minka. Like that he could really hit the ball as, as a seam over the, over the ball. And, it's, and uh, you know, I knew he was going there. He was looking there. Five was there. He's a big target. So I was just broke on the ball. Is that something you saw earlier in the game, a reason why you thought he was going to go there outside of being number five? No, nah, it's, just, it's just a concept, a high, high frequency, two-minute concept versus two high. You know, four verticals trying to hit the ball uh, over the, the middle runner. Was it hard not to go in the end zone in that one? I mean, we... I knew as soon as I caught it, I said, like, I got to get out of bounds. I ain't trying to go back out there again. <laughs> I mean, that's a heads up football play. What, what was the reasoning for that? I mean, most people want to score there, right? I got to do it again. We won the game, go home. You know what I'm saying? I, I, ain't, I ain't trying to add to the stats, pad the stats, nothing like that. I'm, I'm good with just with the win. You, obviously, you guys got the win. Are you pretty happy with the way the defense played today? Um, yes and no. I think, this, I think we, 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 we stopped the run in the first half. Kept the D ball off of us in the first half. Second half, we didn't do that uh, as well. Um, you know, we let them drive down the field. Uh, they got big personnel, big bodies, and, uh, and drove the, the ball down the field. Um, so I think we could, you know, we got to adjust in the second half. I think we could have did that, did that better. Well, the positives right now, you guys won two games in a row, which surprisingly for the first time this season. How does that 
feel? That was crazy. <laughs> it's not surprising. It's a football team. You know what I'm saying? I know. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. I'm messing with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Gotcha. Gotcha. That's how I met. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can tell messing with you. Yeah. Um, no, nah, you know, we just got to keep stacking. You know what I'm saying? We're, we got a, a whole defense back. We're all back healthy. It's our, it's our third game back together. I um, mean, you feel our mojo, our juice coming back together. Offense is getting better and better every game. They're running the ball more, making more plays on the field. Uh, you know, we got Baltimore next week, a tough, tough team, uh, division game. So uh, we just got to stack a third one. As far as the defense is concerned, we've talked about the progression. Third downs, both offensively and defensively, on third downs today, uh, they limited the opposition to three for 10, while on offense they were six for 12. Yep. So that has been, in the last four weeks, consistently better for the Absolutely. Pittsburgh Steelers, totally opposite of what we saw in the first seven games. Totally whatever. opposite. They really struggle on third down. Yeah. That's why they were struggling to win games, because when you, when you can convert on third downs 50%, that's, that's more than, than good enough. You're able to control the clock. Right, and you saw that the Steelers were able to control the clock in that first half, and still won the time of possession battle uh, by five minutes in this game. Uh, that's be that's largely because of being able to run the football and convert on third downs. Here's another thing uh, that you know nobody's going to talk about. They should, however, because coming into this game, Cordero Patterson was killing people in kickoff returns, and the Steelers did a good job of avoiding him all day long. He didn't get a chance to do it. They were kicking away from him, and I think the other part of special teams is Matthew Wright, even though yeah. Boswell will be bat. Uh, four for four today. He's made eight in a row after a bad start. Uh, and then, you know, they didn't give up much. I think Danny Smith and his special teams, we talked about that maybe being a big problem coming into this game after what we saw last week. Uh, they gave up a big return last week in Indianapolis. That was solid today. Solid today. It was, it was a good job kicking away from Patterson mm -hmm. in the kickoff, right? They kicked to the opposite side of where he was at. And Bob and I, you and I were talking during the game about cl clustering them together and letting Patterson and the other returner kick. Yeah, I thought they'd do the that. Kick. Maybe, possibly. I mean, that, that, we've seen that happen before in the NFL and in college. But great job, great strategy kicking away from him. And they'll give the ball to the 25, 30 yard line to someone else versus Patterson, who is very explosive, can take the ball to the house, giving up some kind of touchdown in the kicking game, which could really hurt the team. I thought one of the keys to this game also was Atlanta and Arthur Smith did not play to their strength in the first half of this game. Now, at the end of the day, they averaged 5.2 yards per carry, yet the Steelers ran the ball nine more times than they did. They are a run-first team. They've had success, and quite frankly, the Steelers did not stop them at all. I thought they went away. They started passing the ball early. Yeah. Maybe they're trying to confuse the Steelers. They came whatever. out throwing. They, right. And they shouldn't have. No, that, they shouldn't They have. went away from the strength. The fourth-ranked rushing defense in the NFL, right? And I, when I watched the film preparing for this game, they ran when they had the power set at a pistol. They ran that power football, and they did what they did in the second half to the Steelers throughout the, the games, the first 12 games coming into this game. Just – dominating the line of scrimmage and really munching up on those defensive linemen, which they did to the Steelers in the second half. And they got away from that to start the game. Sometimes coaches overthink the game plan, think we're going to come out and we're going to confuse them, think we're going to throw the ball and run the ball and we throw the ball. Here it hurt them and they fell behind 16-3 to three at halftime. It was a little too late, as you saw there at the end of the game, Bob. And uh, I think you just got me to me. Keep it simple. Stick yeah. to your game plan. Well, there are 28 uh, rushing attempts. Uh, you know, 20 were in the second half, it yep. appears. So, I mean, that eight, you know, when you average 5.2, you want to go to your strength. Yeah. And quite frankly, Marcus Mariota uh, is not the quarterback people thought he would be coming out of college. He was drafted by Tennessee. That didn't work there. He's here now. And, you know, he has mobility. Certainly he can move with his feet. But it seems like when you put pressure on him, and the Steelers did at times, when they blitzed him, he often overthrew. He sailed the, sailed football, the football quite a bit. And you're seeing that, too, with Kenny Pickett. Not, I mean, today with Mariota, a lot. Mm -hmm. When they can't step into the pocket, you've got to give a lot of credit to that defensive line mm -hmm. and the blitzes that were called by Terrell Austin. They put pressure on Mariota. He could not step into his throws and drive the ball. That's why a lot of his balls were sailing over the head of the receivers and he wasn't able to connect. We see that at time with Kenny Pickett. If you go back and watch the film, you will see that the reason why some of his balls are sailing is because he can't step into his throws. And the reason why you're seeing less and less of the ball sailing throughout the last four weeks is because the offensive line is giving him better and better protection each and every week. Now, I, one other thing I want to mention here before we get back to some uh, locker room interviews is that George Pickens, you know, I, I had a hunch he'd have a good game today, only yeah. because back in Georgia where he went to school, he's not from uh, Georgia, he's from Alabama, but he played at Georgia, you know, and, and a lot of hype about Georgia's team right now as they head into the college football playoffs as the number one seed. And by the way, they're going to take on Ohio State. But anyway, 
He only got two targets today for one, which is why he was unhappy. The guy who was drafted ahead of him was Drake London. He got 12 targets yeah. today. So I thought Pickens was going to really have a big day today because of the fact that they would play that up a little bit, but it didn't happen. Well, Drake London is the only real option for Atlanta Falcons in the running game, I mean, the passing game, right? Well, especially with Pitt, Pitts with, out there. Pitts out yeah. for the rest of the season. But if you look at this right now, Pickens, the way he reacted, he did not get the ball the way that he wanted. Um, Obviously, there was an effort to get the ball to Deontay Johnson early and to Fryermuth. Uh, just the ball was not rolling in the direction of George Pickens. I just think you can't act like that, Bob. You've got to be a professional. Part of being a professional is rolling with, especially when you had a big game last week. The ball was going to you last week. You had a couple big catches and going with it. You've got a lot of guys that want the ball, and Coach Tomlin has his work cut out for him. He's got two young, talented receivers that have shown that they can't control their emotions on the field, but Coach Tomlin has always shown that he's able to manage that throughout the years with Antonio Brown mm -hmm. early in his career and other players. Players. So I, I expect him to be able to control this and keep it under management. T.J. Watt clearly played hurt today. You heard Mike Tomlin talk about him. They're going to manage him and see what that means. But T.J. Watt spoke after the game. That's awesome, man. Anytime we can finish the game with the defense out there on the field, obviously if we can't get victory formation. You know, that's the next best thing. So, um, you know, Mink is a guy who we always know is going to make a play in the biggest moments. And that's all just comes down to film study and execution. You know, surprising. I know we talked about it after the game last week, and you guys talked about stacking wins. It's the first time you guys have won two straight games. You know, how does that feel heading into a big division game next week? It's huge. It's huge. But like I said, with win or loss, you have to have a short memory and uh, get back in the lab. And like I said, with a divisional opponent this week, it's going to be a good one. Hopefully everybody back home will uh, bring the juice. Do you like the way the defense played today? No, I mean, it's too, too soon to, to tell. Obviously, we gave up some chunk runs there, some, some bigger plays in the second half, so we're going to have to go back, watch the film, and see where we can get better. Yeah, that was uh, the, big, the big goal all week was to get them behind the chains, which is hard to do for a team that sticks to the run. We knew even in the red zone they loved to run the ball, even on third down. So um, we never really got to a point where we could truly pin our ears back until the last play. Um, but overall, happy with the win more than anything. I don't know. I mean, it, it, every team plays games differently. Uh, you, they do one thing through all the, all the way leading up to a game, and you think they're going to stick to what they do, and then all of a sudden they play us, and it seems to change a little bit. So you can never really uh, be surprised. Um, at the end of the day, we just have to be able to defend what they give us. All right, that's T.J. Watt after the game. Uh, and you can tell that, you know, defense did okay. But I think Atlanta played right into their hands in the first half. That's my opinion. I thought they messed up. You know, Arthur Smith comes from a, a Tennessee offense, which runs the ball all the time with uh, Derek Watt. Yeah. Or Derrick Henry, you mean. And so I thought they'd do more of that. I mean, Patterson is a big dude, and it seems to be a mismatch. In the first half, he carried the ball three times for New yards. You may have remembered that one play that Terrell Edmonds made where Great he play. hurt himself. But yeah. without that, that could have been a 25- to 30-yard run. Easy. It would have broken for a huge right. chunk play. But you look at this, Bob. I mean, talk about the defense. This game could have gone completely different, right? The, the Falcons took over the game in the second half, and they went down. They marched down the field. What did they go down? They went fifth. Um, uh, eight plays for 75 yards to seven minutes, rushes, seven rushes, and really took a little bit of football of the soul of the Steelers on that drive. Yeah. They really did. They pounded them, and they owned the line of scrimmage. Then the Steelers offense comes out, and what do they do? They go three and out and put the Falcons right back on the field. And the Falcons, again, marched down mm. the field and did the same exact thing. They were beating them up at the line of scrimmage and moving the ball, and the linebackers were getting knocked back. Um, and it was, it was ugly. What hurt the, that, I tell you, what hurt the Falcons, they hurt themselves. They got a holding penalty, a false start. That was the difference in the game because up until that point, and the, the Steelers were call. on their heels. The holding, the holding call, call nullified too. a touchdown. That I, was a, yeah, that's what I, I'm yeah. sorry. I meant that. The holding call and the false start nullified that touchdown. That could have been a completely yeah. different game because at that point, the Steelers were on their heels and they were getting pushed around. They were. Uh, but they pushed a, a lot of Atlanta people around in the first half with a good offensive line surge and their run game. So they win the game 19-16. to 16. And for those of you who uh, may have missed some of it, this is how it went down. We had a lot of Matthew Wright uh, field goals for them in the game. A coup countered for Atlanta. He had a 50 and a 40 or a 250 yard plus uh, kicks and that guy's a pretty good reliable kicker. Uh, only two touchdowns in this game. One each. Kenny Pickett goes to Connor Hayward. That one gave them a 10 point lead in the second half. It was a touchdown to Pruitt from Marcus Mariota and that made a 19-13. And again they were knocking on the door. They had a chance um, you know late. I, I didn't understand what go, you know we talk about clock management all the time. Every coach has this issue in my opinion watching games throughout the NFL every week. 
Now, what I saw Arthur Smith do, he had three timeouts, right two minutes and 32. He let that whole play clock go down to the two minute warning without calling a timeout at all. And he had three. He just, he, to me, it was one of the completely mismanagement of a, of a game clock that I've seen this year. Kenny Pickett is at the podium. Let's hear what he has to say after the game. Yeah, it was. It was, and I think we did a good job of doing that. And then, you know, we just had some penalties that we got to clean up. Um, you know, really just hurting ourselves today was probably the biggest thing that stuck out that we need to continue to improve on and, and finishing in the red zone. Um, you know, we had some great opportunities, you know, moving the ball really well. You know, run game was awesome. I thought our balance was really good. Um, but it's just that, that finishing piece where this game could have been put away, you know, a lot sooner. Kenny, how does it feel for you to finally get back to back? Yeah, it feels great. It, you know, it feels great. You see, you see all the hard work that everybody puts in. You know, being in the building all week, and um, you know, to go out here and, and you know, get back-to-back -back wins, and you know, feel the momentum a little bit. It feels great. Was it a big deal on that second and eight when you got the ball to Johnson late? For the first down, did you want to get him involved, or did it just work out? It, well? it really wasn't just that you know we just wanted to get a completion to move the chains. That that was really you know we, we felt good about that play. We had it earlier, kind of worked out similarly. Um, so you know it was good to get the ball in his hands, and you know he did a great job of getting vertical and getting the first force. What was that moment like with uh, Connor whenever you threw the touchdown pass him? That's his first great touchdown, and apparently he had a moment with Cam as well. Earlier in the game. Yeah, man, it was it, it was special, and, and Cam talked to the team before. Um, you know, and I talked to Connor. We were walking out to the tunnel. You know, we said we're going to get the win for his pops today, and um, for having to go out there and, and get his first touchdown in this building, I think you know it, it's incredibly special. I think you know it's not a coincidence. I think everything happens for a reason. So, you know, incredibly proud of him, and you know, really happy we got the win for you know both those guys. I went just a little before your time, but did you uh, learn? Yeah, man, we do a good job. Of, you know, they show a lot of clips, um, you know, the old players that we've had before here, and he's obviously one of the greats that, that came through. So um, it's crazy. You know, I, I wish, you know, Con I was trying to get Connor to go to Pitt. We were we were in the recruiting battle with Michigan State. I was trying to get him, but they edged us out. Um, but glad we're teammates now. Can you, as much as you want to share, just what kind of things you can tell you about his father? Um, you know, I didn't get into, really, you know, a lot of the details. It was just a special game for him. You know, it's just, it means a lot to both those guys. And, you know, I'm really happy that we were you know, able to get the win. Anything specific you need to do to change those threes and the sevens? Yeah, I think, you know, connecting on the one to Pat, I got to give him a better ball and, and, and put it on him. Um, you know, and then the penalties when we got backed up obviously hurt us in there. So those are two two things that stuck out off the bat. Um, you know, I definitely need to put, put a better pass out there for Pat, and, you know, he would have he scored there as well. Talking about the one to the end zone. Right, yeah, in the first, yeah, first half. You feel as close enough? It's, it's the next progression yeah I mean that that's a hundred percent I mean that's just what we're missing right now is is being consistent you know with touchdowns in the red zone so um, that's something that we're continuing to work at we've been working at it um, you know we're close but you know we just got to keep you know close could get us you know a loss in this kind of game so um, we got we got to you know figure that out this week hey Kenny can you compare where you are now what you're seeing how you're feeling and managing the offense versus say a month ago five weeks ago when you first yeah, I mean, obviously when I first, you know, got, you know, put in there versus, versus the Jets, I didn't have a lot of reps, you know, leading up to that point. So, you know, the more that I've been playing, I feel a lot more comfortable going through progressions, knowing, you know, how our guys get in and out of breaks with timing, you know, timing purposes and stuff like that. So every week I feel like I'm getting better and better, and I just want to continue to, you know, improve on the things that I need to work on and then, you know, build off the positives. Kevin, related to that, you've now thrown 120 consecutive passes without a pick. I mean, what goes into that? What's kind of – change for you maybe in the mentality that you have or just the way that you're playing that's allowed you to not turn the ball over? Yeah, I mean, it, it's being smart and, you know, making sure that I put our team in a, in a position to win. And, you know, sometimes that's, you know, throwing it away or, um, you know, tucking it and run. Whatever we need, whatever I need to do to make sure we were in the best position to win is really what I have to do. And I felt like I've done a lot better, you know, a lot better job of that in these past couple of weeks. And it's something that, you know, I think is a recipe for success for us if I continue to do that moving forward. All right, that's Kenny Pickett right there as he's talking about the winning performance today. And once again, uh, no turnovers, which is significant. Now that's four straight games, 120 passes you heard right there without an interception after he threw quite a bit of interceptions early when he first got in there, and that's to be expected. But again, we've talked about development and how yeah. that's what you monitor moving forward here. You've made a decision to go to the first-round pick. You stick with him, and you watch him develop. And the great thing is, too, that the balls that are incomplete that we say are not accurate, 
they're not anywhere that they can be intercepted. Right. right? They're in the dirt. Even to throw the fire, or the, fire booth, right? Down the middle, right? Or it muth. was only where muth. he Can you say muth? That's right. Muth. Muth, muth. <laughs> like my daughter. We're talking, my daughter and I were talking about that. She goes, no, Dad, it's muth. Muth. But, you know, <laughs> but the thing is, those, are ball, those balls are being placed where only he can catch it or nobody mm -hmm. can catch it. And that's the great thing is he, the, this game is really starting to come down for him. He's able to see the field. He's processing things, going through his progressions, and it's a beautiful thing to watch. I really believe that we're seeing before our eyes a star being born in Pittsburgh. All right, we have some updates uh, concerning the rest of the AFC North. We'll get you, and it will impact where we go from here because next week is an AFC North game as Baltimore comes to Pittsburgh. You're going to hear from Cam Hayward. You already heard from Connor. We got Cam coming up next as we continue our coverage of a 1916 Steelers win over Atlanta to get to five wins, seven losses. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back to the neighborhood board store Steelers Extra Point. All right, welcome back as we continue. And Najee Harris had a nice day. He was our player of the game for 86 yards. And he spoke afterwards about his performance today in the locker room. Rich Walsh was there. You know, this this game, it was just, you know, like you said, the, the hard whatever. I don't know how much I had, a hard whatever amount of. How many did I have today? 86. It was a hard 80. Yeah, hard 80. Yeah. How much yeah. does it energize you when you have when you get a stiff arm like that? I mean, you shook the guy off, drilled him in the ground. How much it does a play like that just juice you up? No. This is three games in a row now. You guys have started fast in the first half. Uh, any, what's been the uh, reason, and is it, is it important to carry that into the second half this time? So, uh, say it one more time. You said this is the second time. What? No, I said was it important to carry the offense into the second half this time? The last two games we kind of struggled in the second. Exactly. Half. So that's something we kind of emphasize um, in, the, in the halftime. You know, coming out fast because the past couple games we did struggle coming out. So you know, we want to emphasize on you know coming out second half, not be so flat. Um, really fire off um, from the offensive line and what we do in the, in the passing game, the run game, you know what I mean? So um, that was something that's emph emphasized too. Why the fast starts in the first half? You said what? Why the fast starts in the first half, the way you guys have started last week? You said why? Yeah, yeah. What's the reason? I mean, what have you been doing so well? Oh, what have we done? Like to, oh, um, so well. I mean, you know, I don't know really what it is. Um, we look at it on film, but, you know, really it's just, I mean, probably when you sit down and your, your blood is just, you know, um, you're not moving around so much, then you kind of get kind of cold. But, you know, we keep, I don't know, um, Tell yourself mentally that you know we gotta start fast and you kind of tell it's more of a mindset thing I guess I don't know really but all, all that matters is that we we did do it. Hold on, man. I don't know. Sorry, what'd you say? Man, yeah, I mean, it was, I mean, well, I was frustrated, you know. I'll be honest, with you, you know, because we keep settling for three points when we're so close and we keep having mental mistakes, you know, pre-snap penalties and stuff like that. Um, that's just more of a discipline thing that we need to focus on going into the uh, the next game and focus on the week. But, um, you know, um, us scoring three points, you know, it was good because I think we only scored, we didn't score only two drives maybe or one drive. We didn't score some type of points. Um, but we got to turn those around to six points if you want to go where we were at and be where we're at. All right, that's Najee Harris after the game. Here are your J.P. Roofing final stats. The Steelers win the game. They win the first down. Um, you know, passing yards, much better. And then the big zero in the turnovers. That's always a winning formula. Well, that, to me, that's the difference of the game, right, is the takeaway late in the game. Just like if Deontay Johnson's fumble would have held, that would have been a big part of the game. But here for me is that takeaway from Minka because the Falcons were showing in the second half they were able to move the football. So to me, that's the biggest play of the game there. I love the focus on rushing the football, Bob. 37 rushes in this game. 37 for 154 yards. It's unbelievable that the Steelers, we went from a month ago talking about how they're just not running the football at all, they're ineffective, and now they come out here 37 for 154. Yeah, and it wasn't Kenny Pickett out of desperation either. He, no. he had some movement of his feet, but it was mostly a, a commitment to the run game. Again, Atlanta, only six rushes in the first half, 22 as it turned out in the second half. That's when they had their yardage. That's when they played their game. That's when they took over control and they outcoached themselves. And you never did comment on what happened with Arthur Smith at the end of the first half. We had to go to, a uh, to an interview. Remember, he let that clock go for 32 yeah. seconds without calling a timeout. He had three timeouts at the two-minute warning. Why would you do that? I don't know. How many years have you and I sat here 
and taking phone calls from people calling in saying, Coach Tomlin doesn't know how to manage the clock. He doesn't know how to use his timeouts. <laughs> it happens across the NFL. Everybody mismanages their timeouts and mismanages the clocks. It's very difficult. It's not easy to do. It's just when you're just watching one team, that's pretty much what your focus is and what your what your mode of, 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 of thinking is. If you look at the way he managed that, he mismanaged the clock. He had three timeouts. He could have used the fourth timeout, which is a two-minute warning, and he let the clock wind all the way down, I think almost a minute, Bob, to get on, down to the two-minute warning, yeah. which killed him. Didn't make any sense. All right, Cam Hayward now is speaking at the media, and we'll talk to uh, him right now in the locker room. He's been trying to you know, give her the hump of stacking them. Um, you know, hopefully this is one of many more. Um, but, you know, you can, when you put together uh, wins, uh, both on the road, uh, that's very huge. Uh, I haven't talked to him. Um, uh, if I could share a story, like this morning, me and him went to my dad's grave, and you know we got to share a moment there. Um, and so I was pretty emotional when uh, you know he got the the, the touchdown. Uh, I don't like to be Mr. Soppy, but like that that like really hit me. Luckily, there wasn't a camera on me because I was a mess. You know, it's a, you know, it's a different type of team because uh, usually when you get into a, a game where you go up more than seven points, they go to throwing the ball. Um, but they stay. You gotta give them credit. They stick with their plan. Uh, use uh, pace as a factor. Um, that's something we're gonna have to continue to improve on. But uh, you know, it just comes down to tackling, um, not surrendering touchdowns. I know we surrendered one at the beginning of the, th or the end of the third, but. Uh, you know, getting off the field, uh, only giving them three points was was critical to us. You know, win this game. Cam, they didn't run much in the first half. Did you feel like that was because you took that away early, or do you think they just didn't get there? Uh, we took it away early, got off the field. Uh, when they were able to convert and they got into hurry up situations, they had a lot more success. Uh, and that's going to be something we have to clean up like right away because uh, you know, if it goes past three plays, we got to make sure we stay stout. Um, you know, a couple of times we were short on gaps, didn't tackle well, uh, and they were falling forward a couple of times. Any more questions? Okay, Barry, if you've been asked this, but uh, Connor scoring a touchdown, where did you guys grow up? Your dad played there. What was that moment like for you to watch? watch um, the, the story I shared was, uh, you know, this morning me and him woke up early, um, and we went to my dad's grave, um, and, you know, it kind of hit me when he scored, and you know I was a com complete mess. Uh, I don't like to be the soppy person, and, and you know, but uh, you know it was one of those moments. I just, you know, back home, this is where you know um, they had the Peach Bowl last year, and he got his touchdown here. And um, you know, I like to think God and my dad are always working together. Right. Long overdue. Um, you know, if we want to be a good team, you got to stack good performances and good performances. Uh, we were able to do that. Um, hopefully, it's one of made many. Um, but you know, it comes down to prep. It comes down to practicing. Um, it comes down to us executing. Tom said he thinks potentially it's a launching point for you guys. Yeah. You know, it can be. Uh, I hope it is. We'll make it We've been winning. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I don't. I don't like to say we didn't did everything right because we didn't. But uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, we have more points than them, um, and we're going to need more points from here on out. Uh, offense is going to have to score points. Defenses have to not give up points. Um, you know, one really key that I want to just point out too is uh, the kickoff coverage. Uh, you're going against Cordero Patterson. Um, you know, Matt Wright moved the ball around the field. Um, and didn't let them really get into a rhythm. Uh, and I thought that was very big because they get a lot of hidden yardage in that. Well, that's Cam Hayward uh, paying tribute to his late father by wearing that throwback uniform. Of course, he started his career with the Pitt Panthers. 
to Atlanta, died of brain cancer, and what an emotional story that he and his brother ended up going to the gravesite today uh, before they played this game. And wouldn't, it, wouldn't you know that Cam gets a sack and his brother Connor gets his first NFL receiving touchdown. Pretty appropriate. Pretty appropriate. It's unbelievable. Very, very emotional. I couldn't imagine going to my father's uh, grave and then coming and playing a football game and then having it unfold the way it did with Connor having his first NFL touchdown here in Atlanta on the same day uh, where his dad really had a great career. So it's, it's just a wonderful story and it's, it feels good to see Cam. Uh, Cam's been very hard on this team as through the, through the losing part of the season and to see him uh, act like this and have this emotional moment is well deserving. Tremendous family, that Hayward family, no doubt about it. When we come back, you're going to hear from Pat Fryer Muth, or Muth, but Muth. We're also going to hear from Deontay Johnson. One guy you're not going to hear from is George Pickens, who declined to be interviewed today. It's all coming up when we continue our coverage right here on Pittsburgh CW. Steelers 19, Falcons 16. Welcome back to the Neighborhood Ford Store Steelers Extra Point. All right, we're back with you, and here are some of the scores around the NFL. The Ravens, another low-scoring game. How about Denver drops to 3-9 and nine with no consistent offense at all with Russell Wilson. Lamar Jackson gets injured. It's Tyler Huntley who leads them on a 91-yard game-winning drive, so they win 10-9. to nine. The Browns, even though Deshaun Watson played, he was ineffective today, a 49 uh, rating. Uh, one interception, no touchdowns. They got two defensive touchdowns on the safety. They beat Houston 27-14. And good news for the Steelers in that second round pick they got from the Bears because the Bears lost again their 3-9. And, and Chase Claypool on the day, only five catches for 28 yards. So, Chris, here are your AFC North standings. The Ravens move to 8-4. and four. Bengals are currently playing Kansas City. Seven and four, the Browns and Steelers at five and seven. So your thoughts about what you have there because next week the Ravens come here, first of two meetings on the year. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. The Steelers are playing much better football right now. And you look at the schedule, they have control of their destiny in terms of where they're going to go because they have two games against the Ravens. They have the Browns. That's, those are all winnable games. The Ravens aren't playing good football, even though they're eight and four, and those are winnable games. And then they have the Raiders and they have the Panthers. The Panthers coming the week after the Ravens. And so we'll, we're going to see how this happens. But if they can steal those two games from the Ravens, Bob, and the Ravens go up to, what, 8-6, and six, the Steelers move that from, to 7-7, um, seven and seven, let's see what happens. Yeah. The wild card now is these Bengals. What's they going to do there? Because that's going to make it difficult. Because if the Steelers don't win the division, they're not in the playoffs. No, absolutely. You've got to win a division. And right now the Bengals are leading Kansas City 7-3 to three and driving in the uh, end of the first quarter of that game. All right, Pat Fryer Muth. Had five catches today, one big one for 57 yards. Here's what he had to say in the locker room afterwards. Yeah, I'm excited for that up going opportunity for us. How does it feel to finally get back to It was great. Uh, early in the week, you know, we talked about stacking wings, um, and uh, it feels good to finally stack them, and uh, it's going to be big going into the Baltimore next week. Is the complexion of the season starting to change at all for you or not yet? You said what? After these back-to-back wins, is the complexion of the season and possibility starting to change for you or not yet? We just got to keep winning. Huh? Did it almost seem like a home game out there? Yeah, that was crazy. Uh, you know, I, truthfully, if there was no Steelers friends there, there would be no one in the stands. But yeah, it was it was it was cool. It was great seeing Steelers. I mean, Steelers Nation always comes out, and the road games are always like home games for us. And it was it was, it was really really appreciative of them. Why have you guys started so fast offensively the last three games, and was it important to take it into the second half this time? Yeah, it was big time. Um, you know, credit the O line. They've been they've been moving people off the ball. Uh, awesome and. Uh, you know, we continue to run the ball. It opens up more things downfield, and uh, that's what we can continue to do. That's our winning formula. Okay, Cam. Cool. Like you guys to see, uh, All right, we talked in the pregame show, uh, and I asked Charlie Batch about what he sees when you compare Pat Fryer Muth, Muth to <laughs> Heath Miller. Uh, you know, some of the things you've seen. I mean, his numbers are comparable, first yeah. two years on the job. Do you see this role emerging so that he can become one of these guys? You know, you see it around the NFL. Tight ends who yeah. are some of the best playmakers. Will he emerge as the best playmaker on this team? I don't know if he'll emerge the best playmaker. I, I think he'll be, be one of the top ones. I, I really still believe at the end of the day, even with George Pickens and how he act, he's going to be a big time playmaker for this team. But Fryermuth is going to round out to being a, a player that is very dependable and can deliver the big play uh, when needed. Where I want to see him improve still is in the run game, Bob. That's where Heath Miller really excelled, was in the run game, sealing the edge. And the more that you see Fryermuth improving there, I believe you'll see him coming up on Heath Miller in terms of 
production and, and capability in this offense. And I believe with his improvements already, though, that's why you're seeing some of the improvement with the running game with the Steelers. Deontay Johnson today had 11 targets, five catches. He also had a drop. To me, he should have had a fumble because he made a catch. The ball came out, and that was overturned when it was looked at by the NFL upstairs. George Pickens, on the other hand, had just two targets, one catch. He refused to be interviewed. Deontay talked after the game. Rich Walsh was there. We came out playing fast. Uh, we've been moving the ball. Obviously, we didn't put up enough points that we should, but, you know, we was able to put, uh, get, like, field goals here and there. But, you know, we got to uh, obviously, you know, try to – get six, you know, put more points on the board and uh, just to help defense out more, you know, take some of the pressure off them. So I feel like we've been playing good. We just got to continue uh, and get ready for next week for the Ravens. Oh, yeah, for sure. We just got to keep working and you know, make focus on the little details. Uh, you know, not hurt ourselves with penalties. You know. Just keep playing. We're going to do it. Get, get, keep getting better. And uh, it's going to continue to show. How nice is it to finally get two straight for this team, you know, especially heading into that Ravens game? It's big. Uh, we needed it because um, obviously we're still trying to uh, win out the rest of the season. And, um, you know, hopefully we get, get a chance to get in the playoffs or whatever if we can. Uh, so we just going to focus on one game at a time. And uh, like I said, we're not, we're not giving up yet. So um, like I said, just, just getting these two wins just gives us more confidence. You talked about turning threes into sevens. That one drop that you had, was that, did you just take your eyes off the man? Yeah, just looked up the field and looked back. The ball was in a different spot, you know, but I'm not making no excuses. I got to catch the ball in that moment, so. What were you thinking when they called that fumble? Uh, I wasn't thinking none. Just trying to move <laughs> on to the next play. All right, that's Deontay Johnson. You would have won a lot of money if you had taken the bet that he'd have no touchdown receptions in 12 games after signing Who an $18 million dollar bet, year contract. No way. But, you know, again, I, I can say that he made some plays, but he also seemed to me like they've been trying to target him the last couple of games. He was not happy with the limited targets in the last two. I asked Mike Tomlin that the other day, and he said, no, that's not the case. It was the game plan to go wherever. Uh, but it looks that way anyway on paper. Maybe that's why George Pickens is unhappy. Yeah, I, I think you're going to see that too. Whoever gets the most catches, the other one's not going to be very happy. That's what it seems to me is this pattern. But you look at here, Bob. I, th I have him down for three drops. He had that drop on third down on that on that shallow cross that he dropped that had a lot of grass in front of him that could have extended that drive on third down. Then you had one um, on, just before that 57-yard catch and run um, by Fryer Muth, Muth, however you say it, Bob. And then he dropped that ball. It was thrown in the double coverage, you remember, in cover two. It was thrown late, but he came back on it. Should have been caught. And then that fumble that was overturned, right. that's a drop. Again, so three big drops in this game. Yeah, I thought that was a catch. I'm sorry. I, I, but whatever it was, it ended up being a drop. Right. It, and he's lucky it was a drop. Yeah. Because if it wasn't a drop, it would have been a fumble. No, actually, though, if you think about it, would they have called it a drop because they had hands to the face? Face? Would that was that? Did that take the playback? And it wasn't. Well, no, the play. they. No, the. It's still, if it was a fumble. No, no, no. But I'm talking about the drop. Oh, if they called it a drop, they yeah. would have taken the penalty. They, they, well, they, yeah. they take the penalty and they kick right. it. So, so, but uh, again, that's if you see a receiver with his hands on the ball, and you know he has possession of in. the ball. It's a catch, but the way this is, you got to take two steps, and I never did like. I thought that was a it's little. It's starting bit. to snowball. Last week he dropped one in the end zone, so right, he's he got to make those combat catches, and even the easy ones on that shallow cross, that's got to be caught. One thing that has steadily improved throughout the course of the season, the offensive line in the run game, they've been very good. Largely the same five guys have started, and they have put together pretty good performances. Uh, another 100-plus rushing performance. Dan Moore, part of that, he took a penalty, but other than that, he was pretty good. He spoke afterwards as well. This is up on confidence, two on the road, so that's huge, you know, and then we got one at home next week, so it gives us a little bit of confidence moving into that and also the divisional opponent. You know, a little different for you guys on offense, the quick starts. What, what goes, what's going into that lately? You guys just figuring it out? I think it's us trying to establish a run game early. Um, it's helping us open up our offense. Um, it's giving us a little flexibility to, to just do different things and spread things out. I mean, it's helping the passing game. It gives us confidence as well as an offensive line. How do you feel about the run game today? Man, amazing, amazing. I, I did want to ask you a little bit about, um, you know, getting three instead of seven. You know, that, that seems to be like the one little issue right now. Yeah, definitely. We know that's something that we need to improve on. Um, that's something that we've been working on in practice, just, just red zone execution. Um, it's something that we're going to continue to work on and continue to get better at. Rich Walsh in the locker room with Dan Moore and 
Yeah, field goals are an issue with them. They seem to defer to that. We haven't seen a lot of offensive touchdowns in the last, even though they've won two games. We haven't seen much of that. And they need to end these drives. They're possessing the ball. That's fine. But it's always a penalty or it's a drop or it's something that allows the drive to end abruptly. It just allows the team to get back right. in the game. Your opponent, when you're not scoring touchdowns, scoring field goals, two field goals, you still, of the touchdown, are behind in the game. And so you can have beautiful drives all the way down, and for a penalty or because of a sack, you got to kick a field goal. The Steelers got to get away from those penalties that kill drives and those sacks and be able to punch the ball in the end zone. That's where they're struggling right now, Bob, mm -hmm. is scoring touchdowns. They had that nice 17 yard pass to Connor Hayward, but other than that, it was all field goals. Let's talk specifically about two guys the Steelers brought in in the offseason. Mason Cole at center, James Daniels at right guard. Both of those guys have played consistently well. I mean, they've had some down periods or whatever, but they're in there all the time. Yeah. And those two guys have really been the anchor to a lot of younger players on that offensive line. Well, I think they're playing much better now since the bye week when they're committed to the run game. When they are POs, they, they struggled at times. They were getting beat um, and, and, and stunts and movement by the defensive line. Now they're lining up and you're seeing them blow guys off the ball. And who I love, Bob, you talk about Mason Cole and James Daniel. Who I love is you're seeing Dan Moore Jr. fire off that ball, and he is getting major movement, knocking those guards, knocking those DNs off the ball. And you see that Steelers, they're making a priority of running the ball over him. They're running ball to Dotson and over to Dan Moore Jr. because of the physicality that they bring in the run game, and that's where they're having a lot of successes to that left side. Now it's time to look at our Ford Road Ahead, brought to you by your neighborhood Ford store. This is what's coming up. Big game on December 11th back here at AccraSure Stadium. It is Baltimore, and they are struggling to score points suddenly. They're lucky they got away with a win. Otherwise, they would have been 7-5 and five heading into this game with two head-to-head -head matchups with the Steelers. Then it's at Carolina, a winnable game. Vegas here on Christmas Eve and Baltimore and Cleveland. So. Your thoughts about, you're right, the Steelers have to win a division. There's Absolutely. no way they can get in any other way. Is it possible to win this division? It all depends on the, the Bengals. Right now they're up 14-3 to three against the Chiefs, and the Bengals are, the arrow's pointing up like Coach Tomlin would say, right? They're on the rise. And so I don't know if they'll be able to win the division, but I do believe that they got a shot to win the majority, if not all of these games coming up. The Ravens are struggling to score points. But isn't it funny that they always find a way to win, Bob? They do. They always Somehow, find a way to win, no matter way. what. It's a last-second <laughs> drive, whatever it is, they find a way to win. They always bring out their best games against the Pittsburgh Steelers. So I believe next, next Sunday at 1 o'clock at Acrisure Stadium, it's going to be a buckle your chin strap, set your jaw. Low physical, scoring, low scoring, field goal ridden game. game. Yep. In other words, 9 6, 6 3, Something like that. 12 9. I love Today those kind was, of games. <laughs> no. I love those I, kind I, of you games. You don't want field goals. I like watching them with you, too, because I, I, I like watching I, them. I enjoy I <laughs> <laughs> complain about these low-scoring defensive games. Uh, I know you love him. He's up there talking about every play that results in a negative, and that's fine. You need those tackles for losses. But I want to see some plays down the field once in a while. I, I know. I, I do, too. I, but listen, I love defensive football, watching linebackers come downhill, smacking uh, guys in the face. <laughs> that's the kind of football I like. Tyler, well, Tyler Huntley today was a guy, 91-yard drive. Who would have thought at that point they were down and they needed a touchdown? Yeah. They only had three points all game. Lamar Jackson's out of the game, and he's the guy who orchestrates that, and Ravens come back to beat Denver. I, I really just impotent offensive team. They we, cannot do score. Do we know the Denver. seriousness of Lamar's injury? I don't know. It's an ankle, and, you know, we'll see. That's but the Steelers, that's even if he does play, they've had a history of doing well against him. They have. They have some sort they of – They have, uh, but he does, you know, affect your game plan no defensively. Question. So that's going to be an important part of the uh, preparation for this game. Yeah, but they end up winning 10-9, to 9, the final score today. So it all sets up for a big matchup next week. In Pittsburgh, we'll have it for you, of course, pregame and then postgame. Uh, Chris and I will be back. In the meantime, we have your calls coming up. We're going to continue until 6 o'clock here. It's a special edition of the Ireland Contracting Nightly Sports Call Steelers Edition. So get on the phone and call 412-575-2600. We'll continue next. Thank you for joining us here on Pittsburgh CW following a Steeler fifth win of the year. Back-to-backers, 1916 over Atlanta.